Hey guys, welcome back. So as per learner request, we're going to take relative speed today. Now the issue that they face normally is that how do you come to know whether a question uses relative speed or not, right? How do you come to know whether you need to use the concept at all? And um, in fact, the issue has been that they have maybe tried to use relative speed in questions which don't really require it. So then today we're going to discuss uh, when do we need to use it and when do we not need to use it. Again, we'll not try to make any kind of rules because you know that it doesn't really work out in GMAT, right? It's going to give you an absolutely new type of question and then you wouldn't know whether the rule applies or not. What we're going to try to do is not even think about relative speed. We'll try to solve the questions without worrying whether I have to use relative speed in this or not. We'll just try to solve the question using logic. If the speed, relative speed does get utilized, great right enough. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So, Andy driving at 50 mph, of course, here I make my diagram. I say this is San Diego and this is Sacramento. So, Andy driving at 50 mph. So, here is Andy and he's at 50. Leaves, uh, leaves uh, San Diego for Sacramento, which is 500 miles away. So, the total distance is 500 miles along the single street at 6 a.m. So Andy leaves at 6. Now Beth driving at 90 also leaves San Diego from Sacramento. So again, in the same direction as Andy. At 8 a.m. But Beth leaves at 8 a.m. So what happens by the time it is 8 a.m.? My Andy has already traveled for two hours. And since Andy's speed is 50, I know that Andy is over here, which is a distance of 100 miles away from San Diego. This is my Andy at 8 a.m. And my Beth is over here at 8 a.m. She's going to start now. And her speed is going to be 90. Okay, now um, quickly, first of all, let's just discuss when are they going to meet, right? So Andy is over here, Beth is here, distance between them is 100 miles. Beth's speed is 90 and Andy's speed is 50. So Andy is over here and uh, Andy's going to drive at 50 now and Beth is going to drive at 90. So what is going, Beth going to do? Beth has to cover this 100 miles between them additionally. Beth has to match Andy's 50 and raise it by another little bit of speed to cover additional distance which is there between them, right? If Beth has to catch up with Andy. Whatever Andy is covering, that Beth has to cover. So out of this 90, 50 goes into covering whatever Andy is covering at any given moment. But she still has an extra speed of 40, which she will use to cover this like extra distance, which is between them of 100 miles. So how long will it take for Beth to meet Andy? She has to cover 100 miles extra. And how much extra she, uh, speed does she possess? She has an extra of 40. 50 of her 90 goes into matching Andy's current speed, right? So this tells me that in 2.5 hours, Beth is going to catch up with Andy. Are we good with this, right? All right. So then both Andy and Beth are going to be together at 10.30 a.m. over here. 2.5 hours after Beth starts, right? So Beth is going to reach from here to here in 2.5 hours. And Andy will reach from here to here in 2.5 hours, right? So at 10.30, they'll both be at their meeting point. Let's call it M. Okay. Now, Charlie leaves Sacramento for San Diego. So Charlie is starting from here, from Sacramento, not from San Diego, at 8 a.m. So <clears throat> when Beth started, Charlie also started at that time at 8 a.m. And Charlie's speed was, we don't know. All right. Now, they both okay. So now what do we know? We don't know Charlie's speed. What are we asked? We are asked Charlie's speed, right? But we do know one thing. What? That both Andy and Beth meet Charlie at the same time. Charlie leaves Sacramento for San Diego at 8 a.m. and meets both Andy and Beth at the same time, which means look, Andy and Beth are going to meet at only one point, right? We don't have to be worried about it. They're only going to meet at M. Why? Because when they are both at M together, 
then Andy's speed going ahead is 50 and Beth's speed going ahead is 90. So Beth is only going to increase distance between them. They are not going to meet once again. They are only going to meet together at 10.30 a.m. And Charlie also has to meet them here at 10.30 a.m. This is the point when all three of them can meet. This is the only point when the three of them can meet. All right, fine. So where is this point M? I don't know where this point M is, right? But I can find it out. How? Because I know that Beth's speed is how much? 90 mph. And in 2.5 hours, she reaches the point M, right? So I say 90 into 2.5, which gives me 225, right? So 2.5 is twice of 90 is 180 plus another half, which is 40. So I get 225. 25, 45, so 225, right? So from uh, San Diego to this point M, this distance, this distance is 225 miles. Now I know that from San Diego to Sacramento, this entire distance, this has been given to me as 500 miles. So till M is the distance of 225 miles, which means from M to Sacramento, this distance is 275 miles. Now, I also know that Charlie covered this distance of 275 in how much time? In two and a half hours, because Charlie also started at eight o'clock and Charlie also reached at 10.30 exactly. So he took two and a half hours to cover this distance. So I'll divide 275 by 2.5 to get Charlie's speed because Charlie's distance covered is 275 and Charlie's time taken is 2.5 hours, right? So this gives me 110 miles per hour, right? So Charlie's speed is 110 miles per hour. Of course, it doesn't matter at what time he starts. We don't have to assume that, you know, he has to also start at 8 a.m. He could have very well started at 7 a.m. or at 9 a.m. or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just that he has to reach here at 10.30. If he had started at 7 a.m., then he would have taken three and a half hours to cover 275 miles, right? If he had started at 9, then he would have taken one and a half hours to cover 275. So his speed would automatically be adjusted. So at what do, uh, speed does Charlie drive? Drives at 110 miles per hour. So stations X and Y are connected by two separate straight parallel rail lines. Okay, so stations X and Y. There are 250 miles long. Train P and train Q simultaneously left station X and station Y. So here is my train P and here is my train Q. But two trains passed each other after traveling for two hours. So whatever, at some point, in two hours had passed and the two trains crossed each other. When the two trains passed, which train was nearer to its destination? Okay, so now my question is, which train is nearer to its destination? As in, is P, you know, so somewhere, so the distance between them is 250 miles. So somewhere over here is the right in the center point, which is 125 miles, both from X and Y, right? So the question is that whether the two of them are on this side of 125 or the two of them are on this side of 125, right? Then I'll know which train is closer to its destination because over here, train one will be closer to its destination, which is Y, and over here, train two will be closer to its destination, which is X or so basically, where is my transition point? The point which makes all the difference. It is this center point, right? The right at the 125 miles, yeah, miles point, right? This is my central point that makes the difference. What, when will I, you know, let me think about that situation. What happens in that situation, that ideal stable situation, when both of them, they actually meet at the center point, the transition point, the one which will make all the difference. Let's say if both of them meet at the center point, they would have both covered 125 miles each in how much time? In two hours, right? So then I know that they would have had a speed of 62.5 mph, both of them, if their speeds 
both of them their speeds were 62.5 then in 2 hours they would have met right at the center point by n yeah all right now now this is a data substance equation so we'll look at each statement individually first yeah at the time when the two trains passed, we're looking at statement one. Train P had averaged a speed of 70 miles per hour. What, is, what does it say? It says that when they met each other, the average speed of P at that time was 70 miles per hour, which means that train one had actually covered 140 miles in the two hours, right? What did we say? We said that if both of them cover 125 miles each, they will meet right at the center and they both will be equidistant from their destinations. But we know that my train one, the train P, had actually covered 140 miles in the two hours, which means that this is where they met, right? This is going to give me the distance of 140 isn't it? Which means my train P is closer to its destination. Train Q is certainly farther away. So this statement is sufficient alone. All right. Okay. Look, let's look at statement two now. Only statement two will ignore whatever we got from statement one, right? So we don't have this information of 70 miles and 140 miles along. Train Q averaged a speed of 55 miles per hour for the entire trip. Okay. Look, it is telling us that train Q averaged this much for the entire trip, but we do not know what was the speed of train Q initially when at the time when they met. What was the average speed? Why is statement one different from statement two? Because statement one tells me the average speed of train P you know, from the starting to the point they met. So I know that when they met, how much distance it had covered, right? Train Q is, it is giving me the average speed over the entire journey, but then please understand, it is certainly possible that in the initial part of the journey, train Q was going at 65 miles per hour, you know, greater than my 62.5, for example. So they could have met over here. And then in the later part of the journey, it slowed down such that its average over the entire journey became 55, right? So that is why I cannot say that in the first two hours, its average was 55. I'm given that over the entire duration of the trip, its average was 55. So then I don't know how, what its average was in the first two hours. So then this statement alone is not sufficient. Hence, my answer over here is going to be A. Only statement one is sufficient to solve this question. Okay, let me know if there are any questions. It, it, is, a, it is a slightly tricky question. It's a, it's a really good question. It is one of the tough almost official questions yeah this is the toughest that you would likely get keep in mind that you have to think about the transition point right where does which point makes all the difference set the parameters for that point and then see what information you have yeah yes yes exactly it is one of the og as i said you know, I'm not supposed to say exactly official because, you know, we can use official like questions, but not official questions. So, but yes, it is. So it is one of the official like questions and one of the hardest questions that you would likely get on relative speed. Yes, if statement two says average constant speed is 55, then it'll be enough to calculate, of course, because we are saying that we need an average speed of 62.5 to hit the middle. In case the average speed is 55, then that means that they are going to, uh, that, you know, train, train Q is slower, right? So, yeah, certainly that will be enough. Okay, it is confusing how to be sure that the 70 was the constant speed throughout the first part of the trip. Does it matter that 70 has to be the constant speed throughout the trip? It doesn't. What am I given? That in the first two hours, from the time that it started to the time that they met, 
the average was 70 miles per hour it could have even gone at five miles per hour at some point it could have even gone at 100 miles per hour at some point but i know that in those two hours its average speed was 70 which means that it covered a distance of 140 and I know that the midpoint is 125, right? Here is the, this midpoint. If train um, P covered 140 miles, I don't care at, you know, at what speed was it running. It could have been running at various speeds at various points in time. But as long as I know that in the two hours it covered 140 miles, it means it met somewhere over here in the second part. So it was closer to the destination, right? I don't have to assume that uh, train P was running at a constant speed of 70 miles. I know it averaged 70 over the two hours, means it covered 140 over the two hours. Does that make sense? 